Fast Find Classics. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about a really special car that used some alternative energy uh, more than 100 years ago. This is a, a 1909 Babcock electric vehicle. Uh, one of my hobbies is kind of studying alternative energy, and I just found it fascinating that more than 100 years ago, these cars were on the road. And you always hear that necessity is the mother of invention. And when petrol stations popped up on every corner uh, in the Model T area in the late teens and 1920s, they really didn't have a need to explore alternative energy. Uh, we just went to gasoline and, and the rest is history. And I guess in the last few years, $4 gasoline has, has prompted a resurgence in searches for alternative energy and also to be green and, and helpful to the environment and saving our planet and all that stuff. So uh, just kind of fascinated by what was going on. A lot of folks don't know, too, that in 1806, the first uh, internal combustion engine, or ICE engines as they're referred to, actually ran on hydrogen and oxygen. Uh, and, and here we are. We all took the poison pill and went to gasoline and, and the rest is history and just kind of forgot about it. Uh, but what is old is new again. So way, way before the Prius was ever even thought of, uh, and Toyota for that matter, we've got the Babcock Electric Car Company uh, from Buffalo, New York. Babcock uh, was in business from 1906 to 1912. Uh, and this particular model uh, is a 1909 um, gentleman's Roadster, uh, and it's a fully electric vehicle. And you can kind of see some of the differences uh, in the brass era when this car was made. Uh, this was just kind of a no-frills, simple, lightweight car, where a lot of the other cars here, like this Hupmobile that's right next to us, you can see all the, the heavy brass fixtures and how wonderful and beautiful it is. Really cool. Uh, the Babcock is really shy of that. Um, don't have the, the heavier material. A lot, the metal that is on the car is a lot lighter weight. Uh, some pop metal and some chrome um, now, but just lighter weight um, to really compensate for the fact that this is an electric vehicle. Um, really, really neat. Let's take a look closer. Um, one of the first things you might ask yourself is, is why does an electric car need a radiator? And the answer to that is that it doesn't, and that's not a radiator. It looks cool. Uh, looks like one, and I want a car that looks like everybody else's, uh, so I put a radiator on. And think again about um, the Honda Element that came out uh, in a couple of decades ago. It was the first electric car. Kind of weird looking, and people just didn't warm up to it. And then we evolved into the Prius and even the Corolla and a lot of the other electric vehicles now uh, that look just like other cars. And kind of the same thing, what was old is new again, trying to look very similar. The styling is very similar. Uh, people wanted, wanted to blend in with their alternative energy vehicle. And at the time, really in 1909, no one knew which way we were going. This is, this is before the Model T explosion and all the gas stations. So, um, you know, each, each town may have had one station and, and there were several options when it came to purchasing automobiles. Uh, this particular car uh, really cool. It's made out of a, a, a lightweight wood, actually, and that the metal that you see, this is this is hand-formed pounded steel that's riveted to the wood frame in only a few places. Come on in here and take a little bit closer look, and you can even see the rivet marks here. And this is the wooden frame that that the, the steel is folded and bended and attached to. So really cool, kind of a. We've got wooden wooden wheels here, really similar to a, a horseless carriage that would have had in earlier times. And of course, your your spare right here at your convenience. Pretty cool. Uh, one of the things about the Babcock is that the, the cars the cars had steering wheels, and some of the models in Babcock had suicide doors. Even this particular model 12 gentleman's Roadster doesn't have that, but but just uh, neat nonetheless and innovative. Let's take a look at the interior here. There's not a whole lot to it, but some cool looking gauges. Uh, we've got, of course, a speedometer from Standard. They made a lot of the speedometers in the area. Uh, we've got a voltmeter and an amp meter. Really the, the biggest things that you want to see um, when you're running electricity. Our suspension uh, in the Babcock electric, just uh, like a lot of other 
coaches from that area. The suspension, it's just leaf springs on all fours. And you talk about what's old is new. This this technology is still being used today. My my new model truck has leaf spring suspension in the rear, um, and still still on the road. Now they used it in all four, uh, but just basically the same concept again. Wooden frame, and there's your leaf spring for suspension. This is chain driven here. Uh, by the chain that runs through there, and if you can see that and get a close-up of that, that's not unlike our childhood bicycle frame, uh, just like that with the chain driven, and that's how it works. Um, the electric motor is underneath the seat, and when you raise this compartment, it, takes, it took two really large lead-acid batteries of the era that sat here, um, this direction, underneath the wooden, the wooden bonnet there. And you might ask, well, how fast could it possibly go with two pack, two batteries? Uh, the answer is it, it wasn't bad. Uh, it really wasn't. The top speed of this car, they claim, would be about 30 miles an hour. Um, and it would average a 100-mile range at 17 miles an hour is what they claim. So uh, that's, that's pretty phenomenal if you figure uh, where we are right now uh, and the innovation that, that great companies like Fisker... Uh, Tesla are having with electric vehicles, but again, what's old is new again, and from 1909, Buffalo, New York, made in the USA, right here, the Babcock Electric. I uh, want, want to once again thank the Tallahassee Automobile Museum uh, for allowing us this, this special view uh, behind the ropes, and if you're ever in the Tallahassee area, uh, it's just one of the best collections in the world. I would certainly encourage you to come out and, and check it out.